Welcome to episode 113 of In Touch with iOS, a podcast that talks about iPhone, iPad, Apple Watch, Apple TV, and related technologies. I'm your host, Dave Ginsberg, and my co-host, Warren Sklar, is here. How are you doing, Warren? I am doing well. Thank you. Glad to be uh, here again. Stay out of trouble, I'm sorry, I hope. Yeah. Can you hear me all right? Can you hear me? Can you hear me now? I, I can hear you. Okay. I don't have my, I don't have my, I still am not using my Amazon. Uh, I got an email actually uh, today. It says, uh, review your purchase of, of the purchase of the uh, Amazon USB uh, microphone. Oh yeah. I that that uh, mic. <laughs> I haven't, I haven't reviewed it yet. So that, I'll, I'll save that for you next time. All right. We'll have fun. <laughs> but we also have our guest here this week, as we always do. And well, we are welcoming back Mr. Jeff Gamut to the show. How are you doing, Jeff? I'm doing great. Thanks for having me back again. Absolutely. Uh, th- th- I, I guess I should also say thanks for for being so uh, uh, forgiving because you're having me back. <laughs> I just assume when no, I'm on no. a show, it's a, no, <laughs> I'll no. never get invited back. But I'm going to make you I a do. regular guest now. Come on, you've you've already earned it. You've already earned it. So we really appreciate being here. But seriously, I, I'm happy to be here. Yeah, I appreciate it. We really love your insights. So uh, this week, always got some new stories to talk about. There's all kinds of exciting things that happened last week. Uh, another beta dropped this week, as well as a beta of of uh, of uh, iOS 13 that we didn't expect. Uh, plus, I've got a couple of reviews I'm going to talk about. Uh, got the, the new uh, Function 101 remote for those on camera. You can see I have put it up on the camera here. And uh, I'm looking forward to hearing you talk about that. All kinds of other fun things. Tips, apps. That's what we're here for. Uh, so let's go right in and dig into the news stories for this week. I'm just going to try to avoid talking about Fortnite and uh, and uh, Epic versus Apple. I'm just getting kind of tired of it. I don't know about you guys, but... Uh, uh, I've actually not spoken about the Apple v. Fortnite or Fortnite v. Apple thing. Oh, okay, I guess good. Epic so we'll v. Now. Apple <laughs> on any show at all. all right, well, so now I guess we'll have a little bit of insight. But I, 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 I spun a little... Uh, Difference in the news here. So this is the first article is in 9 to 5 Mac. Uh, Fortnite on iOS and Mac is are losing cross-platform compatibility over the Apple battle. After the judge ruled that uh, they could they couldn't terminate Epic Games developer accounts because of the Unreal Engine, which would which would pretty much eliminate everybody that that uses that uh, technology. Um, and that's going to be the deadline. It's actually uh, I believe is today, tomorrow, uh, or tomorrow that they're going to the 28th. Be, uh, yeah, as we as we record this, so um, and uh, now Fortnite versions will no longer uh, uh, be played on iOS and Mac as cross platform. It will vanish. Um, so this again, I, I've ha- I had a debate the last two weeks on uh, Chuck Joiner's show on Mac uh, Mac Voices Live uh, that uh, I, I very calculated what Epic did with this whole thing. Um, I'm not. I'm not too excited about this company right now, and I'm, and then the the CEOs just doesn't care. They they knew they knew what they were doing. Uh, all they got to do is flip the switch back, and they'd be back in the app store. But apparently, they don't want to do that and want to uh, keep it going. Uh, Jeff, I'll let you start off. What do you think of the, this whole debacle? Well, like I said, this is the first time I've spoken on any show about right. uh, this whole thing. So they want a treat. We're in for a treat. Yeah, I'm going to start by saying. Anyone that thinks that uh, that Epic is doing this in an altruistic manner is incredibly deluded. There, okay. this is all about Epic just wanting to take total control over the revenue stream. I can appreciate wanting okay. to do that. However, I think the way they're going about this is uh, is very disingenuous and it's very crappy. Right. And what they're doing is taking the uh, the users and trying to turn them into pawns in this battle against Apple. And yeah. I think that is just a, a, a horrible thing to do to your users. And it's not like they didn't expect the, this to play out uh, with with the way it well to a degree i am betting they they were thinking some of this would be resolved by now but um yeah. the way that they they planned the the changes that they made into the application knowing full well that they're violating uh their their uh, apple developer agreement to do that mm-hmm. and then playing the victim afterwards come on that yeah. is just yeah. a, a a crappy move and uh, to the point that 
they already had their their anti-1984 video ready to go. It was it was cued and ready. <laughs> yeah, they had they had everything lined up and ready to go. Yeah. I don't think they were expecting to get yanked the same way from the Google Play Store. Um, yeah, no, I didn't think so. And uh, and to Google, they say good for you for uh, for enforcing your your App Store rules as well. Yeah. And uh, and now we get to the point where we have the uh, the court hearing. So we have a preliminary injunction that that says, sure, Apple can uh, can block Fortnite from the App Store, but Apple can't uh, revoke Epic's developer license. So, right. so these are preliminary injunctions. These can change uh, next month. I believe there's another hearing, like in late September. Right. And uh, and then of course there will, there will be additional uh, court time after that because Epic is is playing a a long game here, and Apple is totally ready to fight them on this and sure. seriously epic if you want apple to change the way that that they are handling uh in-app payments then why don't you do the same because their app store is the same as apple's and well apparently i had a little soapbox to climb on you did and we appreciate it um warren you know you and i have had discussions about this for the last few weeks on this show as well as uh mac to the future go um Oh, any other thoughts about uh, this whole uh, the, this whole event that's been going on here? Um, I'm just I'm learning more about Fortnite than I ever think I ever want to know about. Same it. here. Um, <laughs> I never played so it. I, I played it once, maybe when it first came out. Um, so what I've learned today is, uh, and this is kind of kind of still under the next story a little bit, but what I'm what I'm understanding is that there's seasons, and you play. Uh, you know, these seasons and is uh, level one through whatever. And once you hit the, the, the end of the level, um, you're kind of the winner, I guess. And then the season starts over and everybody kind of starts back to the beginning. And it's a whole new update to the world. And I think I saw something that the next season's going to have Marvel included in it. I think it's that's, what I saw. Yeah, that's the rumor. So that's the rumor. So, so what happens is um, it's a server-side update. I think, but it's maybe more than that. So that's why uh, yeah. if Apple doesn't do the update on the iOS device, then they're not going to get the new season. And since uh, the Mac is also affected, whether it's affected because uh, Epic is just like, eh. That's totally an Epic move on, on the Mac side. Yeah. Or, yeah. So they're, yeah. they're either saying, eh, we're not doing it, or eh, we can't do it, or maybe we can do it, but we don't feel like doing it. I'm um, pretty sure they're saying we're not going to do it because right. from, from what I've read, there's no technical reason to stop the uh, Mac Fortnite players from getting the the content update for seasons. Sure. And there's yeah, no there's, there's no technical reason to block them from cross cross platform playing. Right. So. So in my little perfect world, I guess everybody on the Apple devices <laughs> are going to be stuck on this old, the old world while everybody's on uh, else is on the new world. And I'm thinking there's probably enough iPhone users and maybe a couple of Mac users to be okay with that. Hey, we got rid of everybody else, you know. Yeah. Now we got the world to ourselves, and it might be actually kind of fun. But um, it's supposedly still going to work um, after the new season starts you'll you'll be stuck with everybody else who's stuck on that season and right. it's kind of like an abandoned world so i guess it's kind of like going to be a post-apocalyptic post-apocalyptic world for the uh apple users <laughs> yeah. uh and suddenly sounding like an intriguing game to me yeah it's yeah. going to be like there's going to be like you know just dead people lying on the ground that nobody <laughs> cleaned up and uh you know like uh, pixels missing here and there and just it's gonna be like a. It's gonna be like Mad Max, and I think they should rename it to uh, Fortnite Mad Max Apple version. So, uh, yeah, it's kind of it's it's crazy, and you know, it's exactly uh, everything Jeff said is true. It's just Epic being a big baby, more or less, on on at this point. <laughs> and, yeah, and, and I think before it gets, it's gonna get better before it gets worse. At this point, I don't. I think right. at this point. 
uh, Epic is just going to cave in so uh, soon, I think. Yeah, and like you said, the next story, uh, uh, it's really spoiling. Uh, Ars Technica put an article in today, uh, your iPhone copy of Fortnite is about to become out, out of date. And as we just discussed, uh, it's not going to be back on the, you know, that's not going to be back on uh, the app store and you're not going to be able to update it. So it's kind of pointless. So you morons who spent uh, $4,000 for an iPhone that had the Fortnite app on it uh, on eBay, um, uh, you are going to be in. Wait, people uh, are it, doing that? Oh, yeah. You didn't know that story. Yeah. Uh, there was people throwing up iPhone SEs, iPhone 10s, whatever iPhones they had, and they would throw it up on eBay. And there was. I don't know if someone just inflated the price. It's very pro- it probably that's probably what it, what the case was, uh, but someone had bid like four thousand three hundred dollars for an iPhone that had Fortnite uh, already pre-installed on it, ready to go. So, um, like, I, I, I'm trying to wreck my head around this because yeah. what the hell? Um, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so, is, is this like an iPhone where someone has played up so that you, you've leveled up really high? And then I don't know if they leveled it up high or they just get that just has a where, where it was left I, off on Fortnite. I think they just could, left left the app there. Yeah. Yeah, they just left the app on the iPhone so then they can go and play it because it's not gonna be available on the iPhone anymore. Which which I, I never got one. I did that with Flappy Bird, I didn't get that either because Yeah, Flappy Bird was one of the other ones the apps they so, well they did it with that, but it's still tied to that person's iCloud account. Exactly. So if you ever right. that's other thing, the, yeah. I mean if you ever I delete just, if you ever delete, you know, the app by accident, you can't get it back because you're, it's not in well, that's your the chance for taking. Account. Right. Yeah. If the phone ever like dies, you're, you know, it's yeah, it's, it's you're better off selling your your iCloud account with the with the with the, uh, yeah, with the app I mean, on it. If you're if you're spending four thousand dollars <laughs> on a on a game that comes with an iPhone included, yeah. it better have the the Apple ID associated with it that comes as part of the deal and, and, and a credit card, ten and a credit card attached they, to it yeah yeah <laughs> they may sign out of the out of it and just leave the app on the iphones but as far as who knows? I'm, I'm sure it's, that's um, what they're doing yeah but it's, yeah. It, it's yeah, but then you can't do updates right well no you can't update it anyway because it's uh, well it's, i mean before it. it's well yeah that's true yeah i think um, maybe the, I think with, with this eBay stuff, from what I've read, is that it doesn't really sell for that. Maybe somebody no. sells it to each other. Somebody to inflated inf- it. Inflated it up. And kind of, yeah. Yeah. Then, exactly. then yeah, there was more reality checks and you know, three hundred dollars, four hundred dollars for five hundred dollars for an iPhone. So just yeah. more more realistic. Okay. Yeah. If you, um, if you want to buy the iPhone, great. It. But it includes Fortnite. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> What's uh, j- uh, uh, oh wow just wow yeah yep <laughs> crazy stuff and in fact our, ours technica put an update in here uh this was yesterday as we recorded this uh, ios players who have previously downloaded the game will actually be able to continue playing the current version 13.40 which is chapter 2 season 3 update on ios as well as subsequent versions on other platforms so the who knows i, I guess i I don't want to spend any more, much more time on this because it's just silly, <laughs> honestly. It's, guys, any other any other thoughts before we move on? Nope. All right. Let's move on. Uh, and also in Ars Technica, this happened uh, uh, about uh, three days ago. Uh, Apple apologizes to WordPress. No longer requires free app to add purchases. Apple was a little under pressure uh, getting, getting a little jumpy on, on WordPress for iOS, cause, which, of course, is a free app that connects connects everybody to the company's free open source content management system, also known as CMS, uh, which millions of sites around the, uh, uh, the web use for some part of their structure. And, of course, WordPress sells domain names and they sell services and all that stuff. Uh, and uh, Apple decided to, okay, well, you're not doing the in-app purchase. You can't sell this stuff. So we're pulling your app. Um, so Am I misunderstanding Apple- this? Because, and I'm I'm sorry, I interrupted. No, please. Uh, no, uh, that's no, go, uh, go, ahead. Okay. go ahead. Okay. So here, here's what what I thought was going on, and it's that when you get the the WordPress app, so that you can uh, right. manage your WordPress site from your iPhone or iPad, 
that you could go through menus and get to a place where you had the option to then upgrade to a paid WordPress account. And that's right, what the problem was. So what this was it, what, to the dot the dot com plans, not the right, dot org yes. plans. Yeah, yeah. So it wasn't like um like uh Apple was saying you have something that's free and you're letting people use it for free, but we're requiring you to add in a payment option. It's that WordPress had had put it in in kind of a surreptitious right. way, and Apple figured it out and uh and then uh, the WordPress team was like, what if we shut off the thing that shows people that part? And then Apple right. said, nah, I don't know if we're cool with that. But apparently Apple decided, oh, yeah, we are cool with that, which I think yeah. was the right move. So a- am yeah, I misunderstanding uh, how it played out? No, you're not. You're not at all. And, and Apple, here's Apple's actually their statement. They said in a statement, since the developer removed the display of the, their service payment options from the app, it is now a free standalone uh, app and does not have to offer in app purchases. We have informed the developer and apologize for any confusion that we have caused. Okay. So, totally reasonable, happy ending. That was a happy ending except, after all that. Except, except the, the, the president of WordPress kind of said, you know what? We kind of removed that stuff a long time ago before yeah. this even Matt, came out. Matt Mullenweg, yeah. Yeah, he said he said we did that a while ago. It's all it's still cool, but it's not like we just did that. So yeah, you know, it's more like you know the the the, the press made a little noise. We're already getting yeah. some, some some flack with this other uh, epic stuff and and the uh, hay stuff before it. Let's just uh, you know do this nicely. And you know you gotta wonder if they would have been as uh, inviting if this didn't make uh, the uh, tech press. I, I'm wondering if this would have been an issue at all uh, if um, if we didn't have the epic thing happening. Right. Well, I think in general, there's there's been quite the the push on Apple's thirty percent and the App Store. Uh, that that's been quite the discussion for 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 a fair amount of time here. So and this ep- and then Epic just intensified the uh, discussions. So, uh, but. Happy ending with WordPress. I think everybody's fine and no, no complaints anymore. So um, let's go ahead and move on. Um, Apple actually, this was on Mac Rumors. Uh, Apple actually uh, redesigned their newsroom, which actually was kind of overdue, honestly. Uh, you know, the newsroom uh, page on their website that um, gives an emphasis on stories that they share and, and uh, all that kind of fun stuff. Uh, and press release, journalist stuff and all that. If you go in there now, they kind of, they put it in line with the, uh, way everything else is designed so nice clean way of looking at things so like the uh there's a feature article latest news how one teacher is prepared for a year like no other with support from apple so they they always are talking about how great they are yeah like final cut pro 10 was just released with some updates and improvements and uh, apple is now celebrating national parks with their 104th anniversary birthday um so uh I thought that was interesting to see that, that they finally updated because it, it was kind of outdated the way they they put that out, put that out, which I was surprised. That was you know, when they made the 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 changes to what is now outdated and uh, and gone, yeah. um, I never liked it, not at all. Because okay. from my perspective, at at the time, you know, I, I was uh, working for Mac Observer, so sure. I was checking the Apple press release news site on a regular basis. I figured much. And when they changed it, to me, it became much more difficult to use because yeah. you didn't have just these nice clean lists of here's the articles. Yeah, which, exactly. Which was awesome. I mean, it wasn't as pretty as the Apple homepage, but it, I didn't care because it, it worked really well. And I'm looking at the new version. I like um, the squares. I mean, it just has a I nice mean, clean layout. It's clean. It's nice. And uh, and it looks very Apple. And at the same time, I wish they'd go back to the old, old style <laughs> where it was just nice, easy to look at lists. It was very obvious what was most recent. Yeah. It, it was grouped really well. And uh, apparently well, I'm, I, I'm just being RSS a curmudgeon. Feed. 
I wonder if this goes into an RSS feed and maybe you can uh, put it in one of your, in one of your news readers. And <laughs> I, I probably <laughs> can't. I, I do have an ift uh, recipe set up so that every time Apple rolls out uh, a new uh, press release through the, through the new site that I get a, a push notification. Yeah. Yeah. I got to, I just added it to my, 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 uh, News uh, feed feed uh, news reader of choice news explorer and it uh, yeah it looks just like any other RSS it brings all the articles in place. So why do you like News Explorer? And and um, I'm not I'm not like setting you up. I'm genuinely no, interested. No, not at all. I've, I've actually talked about this app before. This actually is on Set App, uh, which uh, we've talked about many times. Uh, this last week uh, actually set up just. Uh, um, added iOS apps uh, to their their mix. So, um, but I like it just the way it lays out. I, I can put feeds in, in and organize them by uh, by by news articles. Uh, but I have stuff focused on Apple focused stuff. I have stuff on uh, local news. I have uh, I put together some of the fu- publications that Future uh, that publishes. You know, like Anna Tech and Top <laughs> that Top Magazine, I can narrow down, narrow down, down the news, uh, the, and then some other tech sites. And I like the way I like the way I can organize it, keep it in place, and it, it and and, and, it, and it, it uses the standard OPML format, so um, I can export the file. And if uh, I decide to go and use it to another reader, and I can use that too, because uh, Net News App is another good one. Uh, mm-hmm. I've, we've talked about that one too. So that's the that's the reason why I use that one. Because I just like I like I like the interface. It's okay, cool. cool. So, anything uh, you'd like to add, Warren? It looks very nice. It looks a lot like uh, the Apple News app layout, to be honest with you. Yeah. Um, I think that's it, probably what their their intent was, just to kind of synchronize what they're doing with that with the news, News Plus. So. Yep. That's um, good. Next article from 9 to 5, Mac. Uh, Facebook again criticizes iOS 14 privacy changes and warns of drastic effect on advertising industry. Uh, Facebook continues to warn advertisers about the effects of the privacy and tracking changes that Apple has planned for iOS 14. Yay. Uh, While a pair of early reports indicated that Facebook's concerns, the company has now published a blog posting detailing how advertisers will be affected by iOS 14's new anti-tracking features. And they go on to explain that it's going to rely on identifiers and all this other stuff. And uh, you could read the article, but... uh, I, I'm, I'm I cry me a river with Facebook, <laughs> honestly. Uh, I mean, they're 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 a beam of of of, of what do they have uh, over a billion uh, uh, subscribers now, and you know they they have other there's other ways of doing advertising. I mean, you'll you'll get around it. Uh, at least with, I like this like a way to sum it up. Uh, what do you think, Jeff? Well, I can appreciate Facebook's concern because we as Facebook users have been exploited for uh, advertising and it's been very beneficial for Facebook. So losing uh, a substantial chunk of that, uh, of that really trackable uh, uh, commodity, meaning us, I can see where that's a really big problem for Facebook. Uh, But at the same time, you know, maybe when they started figuring out how to turn us into the product, they should have thought about the way they're doing it and come up with a system that treated us better, was more respectful of our privacy. And, uh, and yeah, apparently I showed up today with a big soapbox. <laughs> it's okay. We, 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 want to, we don't want to hear your opinions on this stuff. So that, that's um, why you have any other, do you have any thoughts on this at all? Uh, just from what I heard is it's Facebook has all sorts of different advertising revenue and this is not all of it. This is basically they, they, uh, they have a client that they provide, uh, and uh, they, they provide information about people too. Um, and this change affects that. It affects the the information they could give to this one particular client that they sell the information to because they don't have the information to sell um, if this happens. So um, it doesn't change their other advertising revenue, which is all the Facebook ads that you see, you know, other things there. Um, But, you know, like I've told you before, you know, everybody who, you know, hating Facebook seems to be the the, the hipster (laughs) thing to do. Um, Always is. 
yeah, I, like you know, I, I use it, man, but I really hate it. Yeah, you know, it, my grandmother's on there. <laughs> yeah, really, I have to use it because you know my mom doesn't know how to call me anymore. Um, yeah, you know, I, I, do I like everything? You know, about if that's Facebook? the case, call your mom. Exactly. Maybe she's waiting for you. Are you crazy? That's like the last thing I ever want to do is call my mom or my dad. <laughs> so if, if I could just send them like a yeah. thumbs up and thumbs down and messenger to like for the rest of their life, I'll be, I'll be pretty happy. Um, but that's besides the point. <laughs> AOL messenger, right? <laughs> I don't oh, even times. do the thumbs up. I don't even do the thumbs up and thumbs down anymore. I just kind of click on their message and like, like their message you know at this point so it's like you know right. the minimum the minimum you could do um but yeah i mean everybody seems to hate facebook because that's a cool thing to do but you know it's, yeah. it's i i i don't hate it uh i don't love everything they do but no it is what it is yeah what, i i don't hate facebook are. i i do have issues with the way that they've been so cavalier with uh, user privacy over the years yep. and uh, that that feels to me very irresponsible and uh and like something that they were aware that they were doing it's yeah, i mean when I you have that I, much I, data how can you not be aware of uh of the way you're using it yeah but that's every company except for apple and we compare every you know everybody to apple because that's what we do oh sure I, I i'm singling yeah, out and, facebook because that's what we're talking about in this moment right, but, but yeah right. but there's there so many not alone. That do that. yeah they're not alone yeah, exactly. Yep, absolutely. <clears throat> All right. Um, next story. This is in a nine to five Mac. Uh, users can now create shortcuts to switch account on Apple TV with iOS 14 and TV OS 14. Uh, Apple announced some great new features in the shortcuts app with iOS 14, including the new trigger types, uh, an Apple watch app and a redesigned interface on the iPad. And then, uh, today with the sixth beta, which we'll talk about in a minute here, uh, Apple has added a new option in the shortcuts app that allows Apple TV users to easily switch accounts in the iOS TV 14, TV OS 14. In order to use this, of course, you have to be on all the latest beta versions to, to do this. And the switch account user account option that can be used as part of your automated sh shortcut. So do things like setting up your Apple TV, switch accounts a certain time of day, or even uh, associate associate your accounts to command and open of an app. I, I mean, I, I'm, I've been set up for years having a uh, purchase account, uh, Apple ID, and a iCloud account, Apple ID. And I have those both signed into my iP I Apple TV now. And this is going to be a nice uh, feature to be able to switch. So, so okay. Think? I have a question for you because we may be turning this into a let's give Jeff tech support show all of a sudden. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so. If I'm hearing what you're saying correctly, you have two Apple IDs that you have logged into your into your Apple TV. Right. Now, are they both for uh, for purchases, or is one no. purchase and the other is HomeKit? One of them is for back in the old days when you when we didn't have family sharing available. Mm -hmm. I, I, I I'm still stuck on it. And I don't want to lose my iCloud ID because I have it at Mac.com and and me and, mm -hmm. and all the others. So. Um, so I, I originally signed up my Mac.com, uh, account as my iCloud only, or just my iCloud and all my settings and sync, uh, my backups and all that are, are synced on that account. The, I have one on my Gmail account that I use, I had been using for purchases for forever. I mean, we're going back, you know, 10 or 10 <clears> years <throat> at least. So now I don't want to lose all those purchases because, and of course, Apple, of course, it's impossible to get them to ever to help, try to even think that they could help you merge accounts. So I would love to merge it onto one account now because now we have a family share. I would love that so too. I have family sharing and they just won't do it. Um, but it, what the, the reason I gave that example is, is the fact that you can now with this shortcut option, you'd not be able to switch between apps if so needed. Like if you have okay. photos streaming on the Apple TV, you might have it on one Apple ID. If you have uh, your purchase on the other, then you might have it on that. Uh, so that's the reasoning uh, as far as being able to switch. Okay. I, I thought at first you had figured out how to get around the problem that I'm having, which is nope. in iOS 13, you can't have two Apple IDs associated with your Apple TV anymore, which means I have to be logged in either to have a HomeKit bridge uh, or I have to, to be logged in to have access to all of my content. Okay. So uh, um, I, I am stuck with an Apple TV that also used to be my home bridge 
and oh, it can't be that anymore. Just did you have, incredibly frustrating. Yeah. Did Did you have anything on that, Warren? That the uh, I'm not no, on that. I I never had to need to switch it. In fact, I have a second profile on Netflix that I never use either. But um, okay. yeah, it seems like a, it's like a nuclear option. It seems like a, you know to switch out of. Just to add another viewer profile, you have to switch out of Apple uh, Apple to do it, which seems to be a huge, yeah. huge, huge undertaking, but whatever. It's you know, good. I hadn't thought about it that way before. And now that you say it, I'm thinking, holy crap, this, this isn't fixing a problem. It's Apple coming up with a workaround for a problem and spinning yeah. it as a cool new feature. Yeah. Right. Like, like you can't just add like a – like a second profile to like the T like, you know, it, at this point it's a family device, right? It's, it's not your own personal device. Yeah. And, and you know, people are saying it. So, you know, uh, like Netflix figured it out, Hulu figured it out, Disney plus figured it out. Everyone um, figured but it to, out. But to, but they have to actually sign out of the Apple ID just to switch. Yeah. That, that seems pretty yeah. new to me, but whatever. Yeah. Apple's not been very good at getting, uh, their, their Apple IDs in place. Um, it's no, it's a shame. No. I, I, I actually that example have because I, I'm, 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 yeah, I've got, well, I've, I have multiple others that I only use for like testing and stuff. I don't use it as part of any, anything, but my two primary ones, that's the ones I don't ever want to lose. So, um, uh, I lost the one I want. I used, I used to have a UK one when I lived in London and that expired. Oh, that's out, right. but that was, that was great. Cause I was able to get the, uh, you know, UK content that I couldn't get here. Yeah. But eventually, when you don't have a credit card there for long enough, they're like, yeah, you probably don't live here anymore. So you can't have this anymore. So you're out of it. Yep. Um, okay. And then the next uh, story in 95 Mac uh, Apple's stock split prompts the Dow Jones to rejig. Exxon Mobil is out, and all the tech companies are in. So Apple is now going to be part of the, the Dow Jones uh, average. S&P down to average, the indexes, and that just tells you how big they are now. The stock is right at $500 a share as a, as if of, uh, as this is recording, and it's going to be splitting, I uh, believe, tomorrow at the end of business, which I'm kind of excited about, getting three-to-one three, uh, three, three to one, uh, stock uh, ratio there. So um, pretty cool. I- I'm pretty stoked in seeing how successful really Apple has been. So, uh, Warren, what do you think? Yeah, no, it's it's it's, it's uh, gone up a lot. Um, you know, like I said, and we, and I you, you I, said your wife, and you said your wife was like thinks this is a fluke, right? No, well, she, she's <laughs> she, she. The whole market she thinks it's going to have a correction. It's it's uh, artificially high. So mm-hmm. um, you know, the country's not doing as well as uh, Wall Street thinks we are. Um, okay. But the uh, and the and the stock split. You know, again, you're not gaining anything on the day of the spot, you know, you're, it's not like you're making money off that, but it's, it's all psychological. Right. It, it makes people want to be able to buy more uh, yep. stock because it could afford it. But again, that was back in the days where you couldn't buy partial stock. And now I think Robin hood lets you do that. Right. Uh, there's a few companies that you can buy a fractional piece of a stock. So in theory, I could have bought, you know, I could buy, you know, 10% of an Apple stock right now, but um, I'm sure it's going to go up. I'm sure people will say this is a good thing. And I'm, you know, yeah. um, I'm sure it is. Ka-ching. Thoughts, Jeff? Yeah, ka-ching. I, you know, I don't play the stock market game, Yeah. but I, I love the idea of companies doing stock splits because the, from from my perspective, it gives people that wanted to get into a stock an opportunity to do so, hopefully. Yeah. And for the people that are already invested, then it gives them the opportunity to uh, potentially have that initial investment worth so much more. So, uh, yeah. yeah, great. Yeah, good stuff. Um, we'll go ahead and move on. A couple more stories till we go to the topics here. One, uh Mac Observer, actually, uh, this is an article I linked to. Uh, Jeff Butts wrote this article. Uh, Many iPhone apps or ads are hiding malware. Uh, Apple reviews apps of Apple is reviews of apps is comprehensive, but it looks like an advertising framework had had flu- fooled it. One leading software de- developer, SDK Developing Kit, uh, used to help app app developers make money from their apps by hiding malware that can steal your personal data. Yeah, you read that. You read that right. The, the scope of the problem is frightening. And he said there's over 1,200 apps in here 
that uh, are hiding malware. How could that be? I just, I, how, how does Apple let this slip through? Um, it's a, so yeah, it's a, it's a good read, but what do you think, Jeff? All right. So this looks bad for Apple. Yeah. And, uh, and shame on Apple for letting this happen. At the same time, what Apple is having to do to, uh, to screen apps, I mean, that's a monumental task. So, yeah, true. so I can see where you can have uh, some third-party company that's making a, essentially a module that goes into uh, to other apps that, that can access content that it shouldn't. And that it could go unnoticed for a while just because of the nature of, of how the apps are built and how the screening process works. And, uh, and then once Apple figures out what's going on, then, uh, then they can address it and filter out those apps. Uh, but at the same time, until they figure it out, holy crap, you end up with a situation like this where you have a lot of applications that have uh, this malware potentially in it. Um, right. At the same time, though, as a percentage of applications on the App Store, this isn't that big. Yeah, because I, I, I haven't seen a lot of press on it. I think this is just the only one I caught. So, yeah, um, and my guess is that, uh, and and actually, I'm looking at the article now. I. I'm sorry, Dave and Brian, I hadn't actually read this yet. I'm sorry, Jeff, I haven't read your article yet. Um, does it say anything in here about which applications? It didn't give any specifics that I saw. Okay, so I'm going so. to to make a giant leap here and speculate that the apps that are using this specific SDK for uh, okay. for ad placement are not what I'll call the mainstream apps, the really popular apps. Seems like it. And so that the, the actual number of people that are potentially impacted by this is, is probably pretty small. Uh, and this is one of those places where Apple can use that remote kill switch. Yep. That they have for apps, which, uh, which my guess is that uh, we'll figure out some of the apps that are involved in this when yep. Apple, uh, um, actually has to do that or if they have to do that. Yeah. Any thoughts, Warren? Yeah. Like I usually say, you know, researchers find something that's not, uh, that's not really, what do we say? People in lab codes find something that's uh, not really widespread and then, you know, they'll, they'll Apple will fix it. seems like another one of those kind of things. Um, it's just yeah. the funny thing that made me think of is that if you ever accidentally open up an ad in like a, on an Android tablet, there's like no yep. going back from that. They don't hide anything. It's like boxes are opening up. You can't close anything out. The thing starts to smoke <laughs> and burn off. You have to oh. like turn it off and you have to remove the battery and count to 10. And, you know, so, oh, yeah. you know, in, in the scheme of things, this, uh, this seems pretty uh, pleasant. If you, if you don't even know that you're being attacked, <laughs> Hey, why not? But, you know, uh, it's, again, it's the kind of thing where I say it, it's, it's, it takes researchers to figure this stuff out where every other platform, it's, it's just blatantly obvious of what's going on with the malware. And, yeah. um, you know, Apple's pretty good. And like, uh, uh, you know, like um, Jeff said, it's going to be, uh, uh, Apple could probably just on the back end take care of business when it's, it's time yeah, to do that. Of course. Yep. Absolutely. All right, let's go ahead and move on to topics. Uh, beta this week, uh, Warren, you, uh, we got uh, beta six that was released to developers. I know you were all over it as soon as it came out. Um, and it looks like not a lot of huge uh, uh, changes uh, that I could see. Uh, cosmetic, that, was there anything that stood out to you that uh, that, that they added to this, this release? Well, the big news is um, that the uh, beta cycle went from every other week to weekly, at least just for this week so far. Yeah. Um, yeah. You know, Apple's not, uh, <laughs> they never commit to anything. So, don't, you know, I wouldn't be surprised yeah. if ne next week didn't, you know, come out another beta and, um, it, you know, wouldn't have killed them to put out a uh, extra beta this week. It doesn't look like they're doing that. So maybe they'll yeah. uh, wish, wish they'd, you know, been doing it at the same weeks and maybe they'll alternate them. 
Um, the only feature I've noticed is uh, uh, Apple Maps uh, won't stay open for longer than about 10 seconds now. So that's a nice really? feature. Yeah. Uh, uh, I'll, I'll this- try it on my iPad. <laughs> I, I, yeah, I don't have it with maps. You're running on your iPad? Okay. Yeah. yeah I, yep. I have it on, uh, actually, I have it on two iPads. Uh, oh, uh, cool. One of the uh, 10 inch iPad Pros and a fourth gen iPad Mini. All right. And uh, so I'll go and see if, if maps is, uh, is suck city there. Um, yeah. <laughs> what, I've, got, what I've, I've gotten uh, friendly with ways again, evidently I, I, I through this uh, beta cycle. So. Yeah. Some someday ask me to tell you my my ways rage. <laughs> <laughs> I can imagine. <laughs> oh, anyhow, um, what what I have noticed with the limited time that I've had to play with Dev Beta Six is that uh, it it feels like my iPad Mini Four got a performance boost compared to uh, Dev Beta Five. Yeah, it okay. seems snappy. The battery is definitely taking a hit uh, on the last beta too. Uh, I've noticed uh, a couple things with the battery is uh, it doesn't last as long, and it always, uh, even though you keep turning off the uh, the battery health um, to preserve the battery up to eighty percent, it keeps turning itself back on, um, which is fun that your phone only charges eighty percent, even though you tell it not to. So uh, you know, I'm, I'm noticing more bugs than anything, but yeah. It does seem a little faster. They they changed uh, the last beta. They changed the uh, the clock wheel. Um, uh, when you change the time, you could uh, either do the clock wheel, the scrolling thing, or right. type in the number. And uh, the, I don't know if you listen here, but the um, yeah, it's in there. That, yeah, well, the co- the COVID thing is in there too, and that's actually in that in beta now too, where you could opt into the COVID. Um, you could opt into the COVID um, system without tracking without an application or at least you could you could try to uh, on the beta if you try to opt in it goes through the whole process of where you live and all that stuff and it says oops no you don't have an app so it doesn't turn it on so you get a little bit further than you did before but um that's about it now i i'm totally willing to to admit I'm wrong if it turns out I'm wrong, but <laughs> on my iPads running Dev Beta six, I can't get to a place where I can try to enable uh, the the COVID tracking, and instead I see just a, a line in settings that says my iPhone is my device that I'm using for location, and so there just simply aren't any options at all. So you're it, you're correct. There's iPads don't have COVID tracking. Okay. Well, there it's you go. IPhone. Yeah, it's just iPhone, right? Yeah. But I I do like that when I get to the area where it ought to be, it just tells me flat out, here's the device you're using for tracking, and I'm not it. Yeah. yeah but you could tell them maybe you are. Maybe I take my iPad everywhere. Yeah. Um, it doesn't it, does, not, it doesn't believe you. <laughs> At, then the, the Apple Watch, uh, the third beta, public beta came out uh, for the Apple Watch OS 7. And uh, you have, any, have you had any problems with the, the watch, uh, Warren? Um, I decided to do the uh, uh, I install a beta on the way home from work. So I plugged in my, my watch to uh, <laughs> a charger in my car because, uh, you know, I was wanted to do it. And God. It, 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 Jeff, this is it, a man who was in a hospital bed and he did a podcast. So, so, so it actually, um, it was stuck on the Apple logo for about, I would say about five hours. I'm like, yeah, I, I, I did it again. I bricked it. Yeah, looked at it once and it came back up and oh, it's so fine. It's I oh, no, it, it came up, it, it woke up. It, it was like a five hour update that I guess, uh, <laughs> so uh, maybe I won't do the update in the car anymore. Maybe I should, you know, I should say, Jeff, that. This, this is a man who was in a hospital bed and did an iOS beta update at using the hospital's Wi-Fi for eight hours. You know, and the and the uh, Mac updates too, because uh, you know, and he did his back update from there too. I I like to think that uh, that I've been very brave rushing in where angels fear to tread with uh, with Apple betas, but uh, I hold nothing to you, Warren. Oh, I, he's, 
he just says, do it, do it. And I keep saying, no, don't do it. You're What's not the gonna worst that's going to happen? What's going to happen? Well, you're, you're well if IT you brick guy. your Apple well, Watch, you don't have not. an Apple Watch. <laughs> it's brick. The, that, literally, that's the only thing that could happen is you could brick your watch. And then yeah. I am a little worried, and I'll tell you why I'm worried, and, and Dave is coming to like roll his eyes again. But I did. I have a Tesla on order. It's coming in two weeks. It's no, a Tesla I'm, Model I'm Y. I'm happy for you. I'm happy for you. But but seriously, I am a little concerned that the the beta might be a problem with the Tesla app because the Tesla app literally becomes a key to your car. So if that doesn't work, if uh, the, if it doesn't work on the beta, I might have to revert my phone back to uh, iOS 13. And if that's the case, I have to buy another Apple Watch because I can't. Use that's Apple right Watch because uh, yeah, I mean, <laughs> for all the years that I have played with dev betas. I have never put uh, a beta on my Apple watch because I know it's a one-way path. Yeah. I I did it. Once I had to go back to Apple and uh, they did swap it out for me. Um, It's been okay since then, but um, I am playing with fire with the watch. That is a one-way street. Boy, howdy you're playing with fire. Uh, But (laughs) on the other side of that, how is it that Apple can't have a beta system for Apple watch? that isn't destructive. And I thought maybe this, you know, time around, they would figure this out. And you can't tell me it's because it doesn't have a port, you know, because there's got to be, it's just got to be a way, like, I mean, it, it, it has Wi-Fi already on it. If it could get to the internet, it could do an internet recovery. So there's got to be a way that they could make it happen. But I agree. You would think. And yet here yeah. we are. Yeah. Yeah. All right. And then uh, let's, uh, for the sake of time here, let's get we'll briefly to mention that iOS 13.7 was released this week. Yeah, there is a beta for 13. I can't believe it. Uh, and it's all it is is the exposure notification opt in, and it's public beta too. And I don't see anything else that, that's there. I don't know why it's in beta. They might as well just released it. So don't be all surprised if that comes out with the next week uh, as official release. And of course, Warren, you don't ha- you're not on iOS 13, so you can't even say otherwise. <laughs> I, I do have one iPad on that beta. Do you? Okay. Um, it, here's my very quick take on that. The fact that Apple is releasing a 13.7 update, because we do have the beta for it now, tells me that we're not going to get iOS 14 official public release as uh, early as people hope. Yeah, Dave and I, um, we... So David, Guy and I, uh, Guy Searle, are going through this, and he, Guy said that initially, he said just weeks ago, that iOS 14 won't be released until the uh, iPhone 12 is dropped. And, um, you know, this was before we thought, you know, we you know we didn't know if the iPhone was going to be coming out uh, in September, October, November, December, January, who knows. So, you know, Dave and I were like, pretty much, there's no way they're going to hold back iOS 14, you know, if the, the iPhone 12 doesn't drop until December. I mean, that's just craziness. I mean, they're, you know, I agree. how long can you hold? Yeah. But the fact that maybe we're talking two to three weeks, um, that I could see Apple saying, let's wait the two to three weeks till the iPhone 12 drops, and then we'll, you know, put the, the, the final release out at that point. Yeah. That's a little more realistic, I think. Um, I, I think we're getting iOS 14 at the end of September and uh, um, or the first week of October and then the new iPhones at the end of October. Yeah, I agree. Right. I think that I've yeah. been on that since the beginning. So, all right, let's uh, move on. I um, I wanted to uh, do a review this week. Um, I ha- happened to get this Function 101 remote. I, we talked about this on the show before. This was a Swiss uh, remote that was made in Switzerland that wasn't uh, distributed in the U.S. And everybody wanted it because, let, let's face it, everybody hates this, uh, this, this, this gosh darn uh, remote that was that comes with the Apple TV. Um, so Function 101 took on uh, the. Uh, took this on and then it's now distributing this into the U S um, it uh, and I want to give a bit of a review of it. A um, couple of the things that I like about it is the fact that it's got a real nice feel to it. That the face of, of the remote is, is, is uh, the, you, the buttons are raised. It's nice. You can get to get, get to them. You're not dealing with that touchpad on the, 
on the Apple TV remote. And uh, you, uh, you, it, it also integrates your TV. And what well, the neat thing was, and, and like I said, I literally got this this remote about five five hours ago in the mail. So I've mean, already had time to to play with it, and I and I already got my good impressions on it. Uh, it's uh, it automatically synced to my TV, and I have a Samsung TV. I didn't even have to do anything. It automatically sensed that the TV was there, and it turns the power on and off, and it turns the volume up and down. Uh, so it's got that functionality. So it added that, and then it's got all the other functionality that's in there. Uh, and like I said, the buttons are nice; they feel real well, um, and uh, and uh, nice that it works out right, right out of the box. Uh, and it works on uh, two double triple A batteries, which were included, uh, and uh, was very very happy with that. Uh, the cons to it is the fact that if you want to be able to use Siri for uh, for the voice control, you're out of luck. It doesn't have that. This is really just a remote that you just want to have that feels good. It's not small. It's not easy to lose like the, I, the Apple TV remote can be. Uh, so you don't have that as well as the home button. If you want to be able to get into the home button, get to the home uh, and go ho- to the home screen and be able to get to the home menus, uh, you don't have that uh, option either. Uh, so they really stripped this down to just being a, a just a practical basic remote that controls you know functions and you know, really all we want to do on an Apple TV is get to the menu and, and play. Um, so uh, I'm very, very happy uh, to the fact that it does that. Um, but I'm probably going to still keep my Apple uh, TV watch with me. We also got to take into account there's an Apple TV remote app on your iPhone, which works really well uh, as a remote as well. So you've got other options as well. But there's people who like like this kind of remote that is is very solid. Uh, it's big. It's not going to be as hard to lose. And uh, I, I'm, uh, I'm so far impressed. Again, I can only judge it on the five to six hours that I've been using it. So, uh, but... I think it's good. And I know, Jeff, you've been itching to ask questions about it, so go ahead and... Uh, okay. So, uh, um, w- one of the things that, uh, that's that been happening for me recently is uh, I, I, I've been having conversations with people who are saying, hey, I have, uh, I have family members who have no technical inclination at all. They get very confused uh, just trying to use their television. And they have an Apple TV and now they're just really confused about everything. So would this be a good choice to give to that family member that, uh, that they, they don't need to use Siri. They, what they need is remote control that makes it easier for them to use their television and their Apple TV. Absolutely. Oh yeah. This is a good basic remote. I think, I think it'd be perfectly fine for someone like that. I mean, it'll get you through the menus. You, you put it, it, it is kind of weird. You got to hold, the menu button in to, to get to, to go to the home uh, page. You got that option. Um, and the, But the forward, back, pause, all the functionality of the Apple TV, the navigation buttons, the OK button gets you, you know, lets you navigate, navigate through the apps. So it was a little wonky uh, uh, getting through and actually having to enter passwords if you have to sign into your account because sometimes you have to reauthenticate. Mm-hmm. Um, but um, and, but uh, uh, so you do have to go through and, and go through the letters and, and – move the arrows up and down so you don't have the, the voice option, of course. Um, but other than that, I don't think most people would be doing that anyway. They just go to the apps they want to watch and, and, and they're, and they're good with right. it. So. Yeah. Okay, cool. Well, so that's awesome. But I, a good short review. I thought, I think it's, it's, it's a good buy. The price is twenty nine ninety five. I know they, they I, I Wait, ordered this, it? I believe. Yeah. It's only 30 bucks for this remote. So, um, so I ordered this, I think I, th- but I thought I think I ordered this at the beginning of July, so it's been it took a while, over a month. And I, you go on their website now; I'll have a link in the show notes. Um, it looks like they're shipping. Looks like they're still shipping uh, uh, in September. So they actually their warehouse is in Las Vegas, so they in Henderson actually in Henderson, uh, Nevada. Uh, so they're, they're they've got a distribution center there uh, to, to ship these out across the across the country. So a lot of people have been reviewing them, and they've been for the most part are getting pretty positive reviews, other than some of the cons it doesn't offer. Um, you know, as soon as we're done recording, I'm sending the link to this to a friend who needs to get it for his dad. Yeah, there you go. I think your dad, his dad, would probably be very happy with it. Um, Warren, do you use Apple TV a lot, or, or, or what do you think of, of this remote? Yeah, as I was just going to actually say that I don't use my Apple TV enough to to warrant yeah. it. Uh, when I do, I use my phone. I, I don't think I've touched a Siri right. remote forever. Yeah. Um, yeah. And, and now, uh, pretty much, I think all the TVs that matter to me have uh, Apple TV built into it as well. In fact, my TV just 
prompted me that says it, it updated now has Apple TV and AirPlay and all that good yeah. stuff. So, I mean, for me, it's, um, you know, I'm, I'm not a big user of it. I hear good things yeah. about it. And if I use my TV more, I would, would think about it. Um, we have, um, you know, with automation, I have um, a Harmony with the uh, Alexa yep. uh, set up. And that is, you know, that's, that's the, uh, that's the way to go. I mean, that's, that's uh, the best system out there that, and it does do some uh, Apple TV things as well. But yeah, now I hear good things about it. The remote. Oh, I, I'm, I think it's a good remote. And I, I think like Jeff's example was somebody older <laughs> who wants to have a remote that's easy to use and be able to navigate. I may even have my wife try it, see how she likes it. Cause I always, I always hear her. She always has trouble navigating through with, uh, with the Apple, the Apple, <laughs> the Apple's uh, remote with it. So on with that, I have a couple tips I wanted to go through and, uh, Talk about that real quick, and uh, then we're going to get to some apps, and we'll wrap things up here. Uh, uh, three of them I'm going to I'm going to jump on right now is as uh, 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 how to chat with Apple support. Um, I have an article linked here to uh, uh, OSX Daily, uh, and it's really simple to actually chat with uh, with Apple support these days. Uh, if you have an Apple card, I mean, it, it's great. All you have to do is click the link to 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 reach out to them, and it, it uses the same uh, the chat. It's just Apple. And that's the business chat that they've they've incorporated into the uh, into messages. Uh, so all you have to do is you, you go in and you actually just uh, go over to head get, get support.apple.com. You can do it from your web browser, um, and then pick where you're going to need help, and then it'll bring you over to their chat. And then you just have to just describe what your problems are, how to get how to get support, all that stuff. Now, if you do it on your Mac, it'll just do it over th- through the web browser. But if you do it um, if you do it from the Apple support app, it actually it l- utilizes the Apple. Uh, uh, messages as far as that goes. And, uh, uh, this article actually goes through and it gives you some of the ways of, uh, of being able to, to, uh, how to chat and to do this. Have, have uh, Jeff, have you used, used to chat at all with Apple? By coincidence, very first time this week. Yeah. Okay. I must have been, and must have been on the same wavelength, same wavelength here. <laughs> it, clearly. Yeah. I, uh, I, I wasn't sure if when I did the, uh, CBS all access, uh, Showtime bundle ah. because I already had a CBS All yep. Access subscription. Yeah, we about that last week. If it if it was uh, going to automatically cancel my all a- my standalone All Access account and uh, and then just charge me for the bundle, and because it's just not clear, so I used their chat, and it turns out, yep, I needed to cancel my. Uh, my original CBS All Access subscription okay. after I signed up for the bundle. Right. Yep. Yeah. Do that. Yeah. That but, was a great yeah. deal. We talked about that last week. Nine ninety nine. You get Showtime and CBS All Access as a bundle. Yeah, which is what I was paying for CBS. Right, exactly. So and you uh, get commercial free CBS. Yeah, with that. it was great. Yeah, which is great. So not yeah. a bad deal at all. It, it worked smoothly. It was great. Um, all right, and then um, uh, I, I'm uh, also going to talk uh, about. Uh, how to mirror your TV, Apple TV to uh, your Mac. Now, why would you want to do that? Uh, this is actually an article in Tidbits. Uh, our friend Josh Shunners wrote this uh, a few months ago, and I, I, I came back to visit, revisit it. Uh, and um, why would you want to mirror your Apple TV? Well, f- probably for screenshots if you, or presentations, if you actually want to do a present presentation and show your Apple TV, you this would probably be something you'd probably want to utilize. Um, one of the well, one of the hidden features on the Mac is the is the QuickTime player, and I've used this all the time. I had I even used this to show my I, iPhone or my iPad. Uh, and all you have to do is you go into QuickTime player in your Mac and you and you uh, go click File and then New Movie Recording. Uh, and this is uh, uh, and this allows you to be able to connect to your Apple TV and you just pick whichever it is. And then your Apple TV is actually on the screen, which is great. And if you want to do a demonstration, you want to do any screenshots. Or maybe you want to just watch your Apple TV uh, uh, from uh, uh, at your at your computer. You could do that too. So this is a this is a a cool thing that you're able to do, and uh, uh, and it uh, is uh, is really cool. And but it sometimes it it may block things, if, especially if it's got uh, um, if it's got uh, copyright uh, blocks and such. But for the most part works pretty cool. Uh, did you guys know about that? No, nope. no, I didn't, and I 
wish I had known about this a long, long yeah, time. Yeah, I'm ago. sure you've done some because you've done many, it's, many that, uh, stuff on that. So, um, oh, yeah. I mean, there's so many times where I was um, uh, setting up tripods yep. and taking photographs on my television screen when I should have been doing this. Yeah. I can't believe I didn't yeah. know this before, yeah, now. Yeah. but I'm glad I know it now. So you'll learn a few things while you're here, Jeff. Um, yeah, I'm glad <laughs> if, if I knew everything, life would be boring. Oh, I don't know everything either. Believe me. <laughs> um, okay. So we got a couple, uh, app updates and, and a couple, uh, I have one app to update and two apps I want to talk. And then you've got two apps, Jeff, and then we'll wrap things up here. Um, Apple did release updates to iMovie, uh, that went along with the updates they did to, uh, uh, Final Cut Pro X and, um, the uh, uh, the version for iOS and iPad OS has uh, new tw- has twenty five new soundtracks. It's got new filters. They did some bug fixes, performance improvements, and uh, and which is cool. Like, I think it got some new sounds that you can do because you're always so you get kind of sick of some of the sounds that they've been in there forever uh, that, that everybody uses all the time. So, um, and uh, they added some. There were some bug fixes on it as well, which is which is great. Uh, and uh, I'm I'm happy they did that. And they also updated the Mac version too. Um, I have been using my movie, but I, I'm, I am a, I, I, I do have a final cut pro, which I really want to spend some time learning. Uh, but, uh, I movie is still pretty easy and it's amazing. They offer that for free still. And, uh, it's a very powerful tool. Do you, do you use it at all? Uh, Warren at all with iMovie? I, I did use iMovie once recently recently um and it was fun yeah i made it um my son turned 16 or 17 i forget which one yeah. uh and we did know that and it was during the court i should know that and it was during quarantine and uh okay. we did a zoom meeting and we uh That's i fun. made a uh I, I made a video of uh of, of, of something and it was it was neat i was able to uh navigate it without ever using it before which was kind of cool right. and uh yeah, that was it. Maybe I'll use it again in another 16 or 17 years. Any comments, Jeff? Uh, I, I love that Apple keeps improving the functionality of iMovie. So, hooray. I use iMovie occasionally, but uh, honestly, most of the video editing I do is now all on my iPad in LumaFusion. Yeah. Oh, yeah. LumaFusion. Yep. That's that's the other one. That's, 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 that's a great one. Um, and then uh, the one app I had, uh, this this app is called Subtrack, and it's S-U-B-T-R-A-C-K. And what this does is it allows you to, it's kind of like a, a tracking app. It allows you to add all the subscriptions that you have, so hence the name Sub. And if you want to be able to manage your subscriptions like Netflix and Apple Music and Disney Plus, and you pay for Overcast every year, it, 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 it what it does is it allows you to add each one of them in, and, and it's a really nice interface, it's got little squares. And at the very top, it gives you average expenses. It tells you how much you pay per week, per month, and per year as it adds up. And it probably will frighten you as you add all of the subscriptions that you have, how much you are paying uh, uh, for all these things. But I, I think it's a great app and and, and it does have, uh, it, it is free and it does, uh, uh, have a in-app purchase of two ninety nine if and if you want to manage more than three subscriptions, uh, export uh, s- uh, subscription data to CSV file and and so this this that does give you some uh, uh, ex- uh, expandings of this and it's also there's Mac app available too that it'll uh, work as well um, so neat neat app neat app uh, I guess I just need to spend two ninety nine after we're done recording yeah. because I clearly need this yeah I think we all do this is some. I think this is filed under things I don't want to know about. <laughs> That's um, right. <laughs> so I think it's probably better I stay away from this app and, and just uh, continue life with uh, whatever subscriptions. I'm yeah. running I can appreciate that. Um, and then, uh, Jeff, you have two apps you want to talk about real quick. Yes. Um, the first one is uh, is Air Visual Air Quality Forecast, and it's an iOS app yep. that uh, that tells you the uh, the air quality index for whatever location you want, and for for me this is uh, uh, an app that's especially important because I live in Colorado, so we're in wildfire season, which means that uh, I have to deal with a lot of smoke, just like the people in California are having to do right, right now. And uh, and I do feel for all my friends in California that are having to deal with the smoke. Yeah. Um, I I can absolutely empathize, uh, but the great thing is. 
this app gives you that air, that AQI number. It gives you alerts when it changes, and it has an Apple Watch app, so I can have uh, have those alerts right on my watch, and even have a complication for the AQI if I if I need. Yeah, and it's free. Love it. And then the the second app. This is one that uh, I got to get in on the beta program for, and it's Susi S O O. S-E-E, food scanner. And it's an iPhone app that uses the camera on your iPhone. Nice. You go into a grocery store, you pick something up, you hold your iPhone up and let it uh, let the camera look at the ingredients and it highlights all the things oh, cool. that are a problem for you. So you can go into the app and tell it, you know, like in my case, I have a dairy allergy. Yeah. And, uh, and now I can tell which foods are a problem for me without having to go through and read the ingredients myself. I just hold my iPhone up and uh, do a quick scan. And, uh, and I know immediately if there's something that's a problem for me. That's awesome. And I'm sorry, I can't remember how, remember how much it costs, but I think it sounds free. Uh, it's a cool little app. Oh, oh free. it's free. And yeah, there's, in, there's in-app purchases. Oh yeah. Okay. Oh yeah. There's a, there's a subscription. You could do a lifetime supporter for 1499. If you do monthly, it's a ninety-nine cents, and if you do yearly, it's eight ninety-nine. Okay, there you go. If uh, if you need to be watching what you're eating for whatever reason, it's a really cool and handy app. Awesome, and that's a great way to wrap things up. Cool. Uh, let's go ahead and wrap things up for this week. What a great show! Uh, this is a wrap for this week. Please send your comments, questions, and suggestions to our email address, feedback at intouchwithios.com. You can uh, follow us on t- Twitter at InTouchWithIOS, and you can subscribe in your favorite podcatcher, including Apple Podcasts and many others, including Spotify as well. And you can go to our website at InTouchWithIOS, where all the links to all the ways to listen to us are there. I am Dave Ginsberg, and you can find me on Twitter at DaveG65. Uh, Jeff, thanks for being here this week, and uh, where can people find you? Well, thank you for having me on. You guys are awesome and a lot of fun. You can find me on Twitter and Instagram. I'm Jay Gamut, both places. And very soon, because I'm starting a a new podcast, that interview show. So you'll be able to find me there as well. Might be be a podcast. I might be on sometime soon. (laughs) Yeah, I think there's a very high likelihood (laughs) that's going to happen. I can't wait. Yeah. So what you said, how how many, a couple weeks away or... (laughs) Yeah, I think so. Right. Um, I, I had a, a, a few delays, uh, you know, just life gets in the way, yeah. but I, I'm back at the place now where I can make the show happen. Awesome. Can't wait. Warren, where will we find you? Huh? No, don't worry about me, Jeff. Thanks again. <laughs> you always say that. that was cool. It's always, always fun talking to you. Well, Mac to the Future. I want everybody to come out to the Mac to the Future Facebook page. It's a Facebook group. Excuse me. Uh, we had a lot of fun yep. over there, so and Warren is very active there, so that's for sure. And you're always going to get some for good now, answers and some until until smart until everybody gets rid of Facebook, yep. until everybody kills Facebook with all their complaining. Yeah. And, now, and Warren, I've else, noticed yeah. a really common um, yeah. bit of advice you give people, which is just do yeah, it. Just do it. That's what he says about the beta, the beta. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> put the beta. Put the beta on. Just go on Facebook. <laughs> tell them where you live. Tell them how much the um, money you earn. Who, you know, or, you know, listen, in, in, in six years, it's not going to matter. We're all going to be dead. So, you know, we got free Facebook. We got to play with the betas. What else can we want? There, I mean, come on. There you go. Just live. Just live. All right. On that note, I appreciate everybody <laughs> listening this week. I hope you enjoyed the show, and we'll talk to you again soon.